<sighs> hey guys, what's up? Sorry about the entrance. Um, this is Emperor Pro here. And, uh, welcome to this little, uh, tutorial. See, okay, right now, I, um, I forgot who this is for, but this is how to make a menu using events and pictures. So, right here I have four pictures that, uh, well, there's actually text here, you can't really see it, but there's text here, and, uh, each one of them, you know, represents whichever one is selected. So, O1 has menu 1 and O2, menu 2, etc. Et so, what you want to do is you go to, um, I'm going to set the player here. So I'm going to have like a little starting event. And uh, what you want to do, you first want to make sure the priority uh, is below characters or whatever. Um, the trigger, I mean, ah, sorry guys. Okay, the frequency, here we go, is the highest. Speed, faster. And um, trigger, you want to do parallel process. Go ahead and click OK on that. Put one right next to it. Auto run, check the uh, switch box and make a new switch somewhere that says menu and make sure you check this box All right. so that means whenever, uh, whenever the menu is activated it's going to stop the player from moving now go back to your uh, parallel process and what we're going to do is we are going to do conditional branch go to tab 4 we're going to go to script we're going to do input dot trigger down like so um, yeah, colon and then down. We're gonna do. Oh yeah. Um. Uh, uncheck the uh, set handling thing. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go another conditional branch. We're gonna make a variable. Or no, 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 we're not, no, we're not, no, we're not, never mind. But we are gonna go to control variables, and we're going to do. We're gonna rename. We're gonna name a random variable, and it's gonna be called menu. Name the variable menu as well. So, add by a constant of one. Um, actually, yes, we do want to make a parallel or a conditional branch. We're gonna do conditional branch variable me take note. menu is less than yeah. If it's less than three, then we're gonna add this there. Um, uncheck the set handling thing. Now we're going to copy this and paste it under here. We're going to change the word down to up. Now we're going to do if menu is greater than, if it's greater than or equal to zero, because, um, okay, you would have however many options, like for example, I have menu one, two, and three, four. You would have, because zero counts as one, so you would actually have one less than the final one that you have. That's why I put three. Um, anyways, if it's greater than or equal to zero, or actually no, if it's greater than zero, not greater than or equal to. Wait. Yeah, if it's greater than zero, we're gonna do menu subtract. So menu minus equals one. Now we're going to do. We're gonna do this. Uh, <laughs> Oh, first you want to check the switch here and make sure it's the same thing as menu. Uh, in fact, go ahead and click copy and paste so it's on tab 2. And um, uncheck this on tab 1. And we'll get to tab 1 in a minute. So tab 1 is normal. Uh, same settings, but normal has emptiness. And uh, tab 2 is the one we're working on now. Alright, so continuing on, we want to do show picture. Oh wait, we're gonna do conditional branches to show the pictures. Okay, so conditional branch. Sorry guys, it's been a really long time since I've done something like this. Um, variable menu is equal to zero. Uncheck the set handling. You're gonna do show picture, and it's gonna show the first selection. Opacity is super high. All the stuff is default. Copy and paste. If menu is equal to one, you're gonna show picture two. You see how this works? Copy and paste. If menu is equal to two, take note. <laughs> Show picture three. Character accession. And if it's equal to three, then you show picture four. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And over here on tab one, 
you want to do make sure it's parallel process highest and faster and uh, you want to do conditional branch script um, input dot trigger B I'm checking site handling well first thing you want to do is uh, disable the menu so you're going to do Uh, oh, change menu access, you're going to go to disable, right above that. And then, okay, so we're going to do conditional branch input trigger B. It uh, flips the switch. Okay, control switches. Menu is on. Now we're going to copy this and bring it over to here. And uh, then we're going to have it off over here. So go ahead and click that, and let's test that out. Yep, there's a the menu. But as you can clearly see, it's not like uh, it doesn't update like as fast as you'd want, and for some reason the character still moves. So to do to fix that, go to your auto run, and then do set move route player, wait one frame, uncheck the wait for completion box. Moving, but we can't get out of the menu, right? I don't know why that is, but we, oh, we can, but uh, it's very unregistering. Like that's the bug with uh, RPG Maker VX Ace. It doesn't register sometimes. God only knows why, but man, is it ever annoying. So try auto run and delete that. Um, with RPG Maker 2003, with RPG Maker 2003, this works flawlessly. Oh, you so you gotta have it as auto run. All right. Okay, so um, it's not parallel process anymore then. Good. That's amazing. All right, so um, this is the parallel. Make this uh, parallel process for the... And instead of input trigger, we're going to do... Car wait, oops. We're going to do... Button B is being pressed. Or no, 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 we have to do the input trigger, don't we? Okay, so you would... Yeah. All right. Input dot trigger input wait B Okay, let's try actually making this an auto run instead of a parallel process. If so, then things have changed slightly since the last time I've tried anything like this. <laughs> nah, see now you can't move. That's the thing. When it's an auto run, you can't move. Okay, I got an idea. Make it a parallel process. Then we're going to do this. We're going to do uh, we're going to have a little workaround. So we're going to do B is being pressed, but this means if you hold it down, it's obviously you know, going to keep on going right back to the menu, right? But the trick to that is you're also going to do another conditional branch and this is going to be called menu wait. Uh variable, we're going to do we're going to make a variable called temp and it's going to allow us to only register that key down once and um, is not equal to one yeah if it's not equal to one then it does all this else if um okay actually get rid of the else thing then we're going to copy and paste this again right we're going to delete what's inside so if it's being pressed set this right here do nothing or actually, we'll just edit this one. Um, so set this right here. On the conditional branch B is being pressed. Make sure you uh, check the little box here. So you can have an else thing. And then we're going to do control variables. Um, temp is equal. Set it to zero. All right. Now go over here. And when, you, when you're done with this trigger, you would simply... What does that say? No. First you would, um, you would erase the picture. So you do not rotate. You do do uh, erase picture, and then you would do bulk my. I don't know. Um, you would actually change control variables. You would set the temp, heck, no, temp variable to one. You would set it to one. This will mean right when you close the menu, you're not going to instantly go right back into it. 
Good. Yes, it works. All right. Now, um, let me go ahead and edit the images, and I'll show you what it would look like if you made a pretty good menu. All right, guys. So I edited the images to where it has like arrows and stuff. So um, I'm gonna modify the event. We're gonna do conditional branch is equal to four because there's a total of six choices. So we're gonna make a maximum of five. So if it's four, we're gonna show choice five or show picture five. Copy this. Edit it. If six, it does the exit. Oops. Or if five, it does the exit. All right. Um. So now we're gonna change where if it's less than three, right here, we're gonna change three to five because there's a total of six. So it's always minus one depending on your situation. Anyways, um, so the art. Let's try that out. Oh, and if you want to make uh, sound effects, you would also put right here. You would do. Um, you would do play SC. And you would find some kind of sound effect. We're going to do the cursor. Wait. Dag nab it. We're going to do the cursor effect. Yeah. Now let's test that out. And then obviously, you know, you can... You do the same thing. Uh, well, input C would be the uh, choice thing. Uh, that's really, uh, really, really bright. So, if it's too bright, what we, all we have to do um, is right above everything, you would do tent screen. We're going to do dark. Oh, we're going to make it really dark. We're going to make it... Um, we're going to tent the screen really dark. And uh, one frame and uncheck the wait for completion. Copy that. And paste it right above the 10 equals one thing for whenever you cancel it, and set it to normal. <laughs> That'll allow the whole dark background thing. See? And there you go. That's how you make a little menu. I will explain. Um, okay, here I'll show you. So if you wanted to do something, you would do. Um, you would do this conditional branch. You would do script input dot trigger C excuse me and uncheck the uh, set handling thing. Yeah. Then you would do another conditional branch, and this is what you would determine this is how you would determine what menu you're on. You would go to menu uh, equal to zero. Zero would be the very top. One would you know how this goes. But um if it's equal to zero meaning if you've selected bag in our case, if it's equal to one where you've selected the other option right underneath bag and it goes so on and so forth up to five. Um, so you would do zero, which is bag in our case, uncheck the handling. And uh, we're gonna call the menu. Open menu screen. Or no, yeah, let's call the menu for, as an example. <laughs> See, as you can tell, we're not, it's not working here, right? But if you go up here, it calls a menu. And obviously, you can do a uh, sound effect as well. And, um, yeah, so this is pretty cool. I'm really glad to know that this still works with uh, RPG Maker VX8. I wasn't sure if it did or not, because, like, the whole bug with parallel process, I thought it was a bug, but they just changed things. So, um, awesome. before play menu screen, we're going to be playing a sound effect. I'm going to do play SE. Uh cursor. No, we're going to play decision. Alright, uh, we'll do three. And... Oh, actually, what you want to do is play, play the sound effects right there. Play the sound effect right underneath the trigger and before all your conditional branches. That way, you know, you don't have to play the sound effect each and every time. Uh, copy and paste this. So if, if menu is equal to, which one was save? Save, 0, 1, 2, 3. So save would be 3. And that's that. And that explain, that shows you how to do everything. There's a save menu. There's a bag. 
And as you can see, the background and everything still stays. All right, guys. So thank you all for watching. This is how you make... Um... Oh, yeah. If you want to make an exit thing like that, all you have to do is... Um... Hey, you would do... Okay. You would right here where, um, where the input trigger B is, right above everything else um, in, inside of the conditional branch input trigger B, you would put a label. You would name it Pokemon. And um, edit that so you can copy the name exactly. And so, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so if it's equal to five, which is exit, we're gonna do jump to label Pokemon. Infinite loop. <laughs> that was not good. What just happened? Okay, fine. We'll just copy this. That should not have done that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man. All right. There you go. Now it exits it. And the cool thing is it stays with your uh, thing, but if you want to reset that, then just reset the menu variable to zero. And yeah. Hope that helps, and I'll see you guys later.